hello guys welcome to my channel so today we are going to look at the most important or mostly asked interview questions on microservices so this is going to be the part one of this series i will be creating more parts on this series so stay tuned for this and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so now let's start with the questions so first question is what is coupling so coupling is the level of interdependence between software modules and it could be in a class in a package or it could be a microservice module the connection essentially talks about how altering one item requires altering another so coupling is like uh, let's say two things and these two things are related to each other so how they are related to each other that in uh, layman terms could be coupling now there are two types of coupling first is your tight coupling another one is loose coupling so and th this terminology is not limited to microservices this could be covered in various software concepts right so your code could be tightly coupled your code could be loosely coupled similarly in microservices as well we have these coupling so let's talk about tight coupling first so in terms of an example you can see here we have department we have employee so in department we have department id department name and department location also we have a list of employee so employee is another object which has employee id name age and salary so how this code is tightly coupled is we are dependent on employee when we are talking about department so this code is tightly coupled because we are dependent on employee if we make a change in our employee class then we have to compensate with this change in our department as well right so how should we proceed with this so if you want your code to be tightly coupled it's it's okay it could be uh, a possibility that in some rare scenarios you want your code to be tightly coupled it is not a mandate and it is not conventional it should not be a habit right you can opt for loosely coupled here as well so we can have employee id in our department class as well what this will achieve us is what this will achieve is that it will link with your employee table but it is not actually tightly coupled code so here if we make any change to our employee class we are only using employee id in department table and we are not going to change employee id because this is going to be a primary key and a must this is going to be the perfect example where you won't be changing anything which is going to affect your department table talking about tightly coupled code we had an employee object and list of employee object right we didn't need that so that's why we should not refer to this example as a perfect example of using tightly coupling code this is just showing that you should opt for loosely coupled code more often than tightly coupled code so this was all coupling now second question is what is cohesion so cohesion is the degree to which the members of a certain class belongs to each other it is a measure of how deeply each piece of device module functionality relates therefore the most suitable term for defining cohesion is the code that shifts together stays together now this is all book bookish uh, language so in in layman terms you can easily relate to cohesion as let's say in my class if i have a uh, different different functionality which relates to each other but there is one functionality which is unrelated to the existing other functionalities then my code or my current class is going to be a low cohesion so now let's take an example so there are two classes here one in in my one employee class you can see that i have get employee id get name get age get salary these four methods relates to employee class so these four methods basically get you the data which is going to be in your employee table so this relates to your employee class in terms of functionality and understanding but the send mail method doesn't relates to this employee class it could be in another uh, class which could be your send mail class or main class or mail utility class something like that which could have made more sense than putting this method in my employee class 
now talking about low cohesion you can see that in my low cohesion employee class i don't have send mail method because this method send mail is going to be in another in another class which makes more sense so in high cohesion i can say that i have unrelated methods which don't relate to each other or functionality which don't relate to each other in my low cohesion everything makes sense or everything relates to each other right so i hope this part is clear now third question is what is a microservice so uh, architectural wise we can say that a microservice is going to be your autonomous deployable architecture your microservice is going to be loosely coupled it is based on business abilities and it is going to be managed by a small team of owners now a company can provide huge complex applications quickly often reliably and sustainably thanks to the microservice architecture which is going to be essential for competing and succeeding in the modern world now before microservices we had monolithic architecture so somewhere along you can see that microservice architecture provides you more benefits over monolithic or you can say uh, whatever monolithic architecture was lacking microservice has it now in this example what we can see is that in my mobile application i'm using rest api and hitting my api gateway towards account service which is actually getting the data from your account database now api gateway can also hit your inventory service which is going to hit your inventory database again it can also hit your shipping service which is going to hit shipping database so here you can see that we have a api gateway which passes your rest api request and you don't care about where it has to go api gateway will take care of it right so you are using your mobile app to hit an api gateway and api gateway is actually hitting the request back to a specific module which is hitting a specific database through your browser as well you can do the same thing with your storefront web app right they both are being interlinked so this is going to be an added functionality here in microservice that let's say in your account service you are using java code but in your inventory service you are using python code also your database language could vary so your account database could be mysql based and inventory database could be your oracle database right so it gives you more flexibility now comparing monolithic architecture and microservice architecture here so in your monolithic architecture you can see that your application is bundled into a single entity so if you have three modules a b c then these three modules are bundled together to make a particular application so here you create a deployable jar or war file a single jar or war file which comprises of your entire application and this could also mean that if you change only in your module b then you have to redeploy a b c together into a war or a jar so it affects everything whenever you make a small change in your microservice architecture you have a service running independently of your service b or service c so if you make any change to your service b then you don't need to deploy service a and service c you just have to deploy service c so here it gives you more flexibility towards your let's say ci cd pipeline deployment wise development wise testing wise it gives you more flexibility so i hope this part is clear now what are some pros and cons of monolithic so this is very important because this is going to help us understand why actually we need microservices architecture now in monolithic architecture as we have explained this example we have all the layers bundled together into a single entity right that is monolithic architecture now talking about pros it is easy to develop so if we want to develop an entire application and get it to market quickly monolithic architecture has a lot of advantages it's easy for a small team to rapidly pull together and build an executable app using monolithic architecture this makes monolithic ideal for startups without big software development budgets simple deployment monolithic technology is not as complex as microservice technology monolithic applications have fewer mo moving parts so there are fewer components to manage and fix together all in all 
the self-contained nature of a monolithic app makes it easier to deploy, manage and maintain than a microservices architecture. Now testing and debugging. So this is a big one and this is a big con for your microservices architecture. So with microservices, we have to test all parts of the application separately from the software architecture to things like caching, dependencies, data access and more. That's not a problem with monolithic architecture because the application is fitted as a single unit and works together as a whole. You can do everything quickly and easily from a central logging system. Now talking about cons, so less scalability. Monolithic architecture software is tightly coupled. It can be hard to scale as your code base grows or if you want to add new features, you need to drag the entire architecture up with you. Even if you only want to boost or alter a single function, the entire application needs changing. This isn't just time and resource con consuming, but can also disrupt your continuous delivery. Inability to adapt to new technologies. As mentioned, monolithic applications are tightly coupled. Take a music app, for example, the catalog is connected tightly to the purchase and play services. This means it's hard to bring in new technologies or web services without dismantling the entire app. High dependence between functionalities. Because of the tight dependency we mentioned before, monolithic applications can run into software engineering and downtime difficulties. So talking about music app again, we have the catalog play and purchase functions but they are dependent on each other. If one goes down, it takes the others with it. Now, why should we use microservices? I think all the cons that we talked about before for mon monolithic architecture could be your reason for choosing microservices. So first reason is your increased resilience. A microservice is resilient to failures and to be able to restart often on another machine for availability. Improved scalability. This means that your application could grow or shrink anytime, anywhere. Whatever you need, it can be done. The ability to use the right tool for the right task. Now let's say talking about 2023 right now, we have let's say Python language, which is going to provide me efficiency as of now. And I created that module using Python, but let's say there is, there is going to be a requirement in let's say 2030 where I have another language, which is better than Python in terms of efficiency. Now I don't need to use Python here. I can use that new language to create that new functionality in a separate module. So this gives me an, uh, an ability or a flexibility to choose whatever I need for my task, right? Now we can have real time processing. We can simplify cross team coordination. So these are your benefits or the reasons that you, that you should choose microservices. Now, what are some cons of using microservices? So there are a lot of reasons for which, uh, right now people are choosing monolithic architecture. If you are not aware prime video, which is, um, owned by Amazon has changed its architecture somewhere along from microservices to monolithic, right? So there are a lot of things which is wrong with microservices architecture. So first thing is communication between services is complex. So let's say currently you have five to 10 services currently working dependent on each other or maybe independent on each other. They are working fine. Everything is good. Now let's say if you want to add a communication in between each other, it is going to be fine. But as time increases, your services also increases complexity wise, it could get worse. The communication is going to be difficult, right? So that's why in terms of scalability, if you increase your application or your services count, then it could get complex and it's a high possibility. Now more services equals more resources. Resources could be your database resources, your file resources, your uh, space resources. So if you are running your services independently, it could need a new database. It could need a new file system as well as let's say new operating system, everything new, right? So it means that you need more resources, which means more money. Global testing is difficult. 
now in your entire application let's say if you have 10 modules running independently then collectively if you want to test it it is not going to be easy it's going to be a big task because you have to test every module independently and then you have to test your your entire application with your proper com communication between each service debugging problems can be harder in case you see any kind of error or a bug then it is going to be hard to debug the issues because even logging is going to be difficult in between your services deployment challenges again you have your uh, multiple modules here and each module has to be deployed separately but let's say if there is a dependency between your another module and they are interlinked with each other or they are dependent on a particular resource or something like that then deployment wise it is going to get challenging and if it is a one to one communication it might be easy but if it is a one to ten relationship as in there is a one service on which 10 of my services are dependent and it could be a possibility that all these 10 services are dependent on that service based on a different resource or different thing then making all these scenarios in my mind and thinking of possibility to how to deploy without affecting those services is going to get difficult so these are some of the cons of using microservices so this was all i had for this part one of the series I hope everything was clear. If not, you can let me know your questions on the comment section. I will soon post part 2 video of this series. So stay tuned for more and have a good day.